Hi everybody, beautiful souls and creators out there. I wanted to do a special short video on a further explanation on Ho'oponopono. Um, it coming from my culture, um, coming from Hawaii. Um, kind of like the basics of it, what it is, uh, what it means, the process of it, and kind of like a deeper story about um, where it comes from. Right? So, because a lot of people know what Ho'oponopono is and, and the four steps, the four things that we say, um, they don't really understand the process of what it goes through or really where it comes from because the actual practice that Hawaiians know, ancient Hawaiians has been passed down of Ho'oponopono is actually way older than that. And, and the Hawaiians were not the only ones with this knowledge. There are many ancient peoples that and um, originators of native cultures that have had and held on to this um, process, this tradition um, of forgiveness and forgiveness for the self and forgiveness of others. Uh, and I'll give a little bit of history later. I promised some people um, that I would put a file. I thought maybe it would just be a little easier if I did a, a video on it first. Um, instead of just like a, a paper file. Uh, let's see. So, ho'oponopono means to set things correct. It means to set things right. And um, it really means to make things right with your ancestors, with yourself, or with energies outside yourself by making the energies within yourself uh, right. So it's an acceptance of the energies of who we are and acceptance of what's outside of us um, in order to correct. So in order to do this, there's a lot of this forgiveness. So people are like saying that this is the forgiveness ritual. It is a forgiveness ritual, um, but it is really just making things right and cleansing, clearing away um, energies and thought processes or ways that you think and feel about other people and not just other people, but about yourself. So there is not an actual training for how to do Ho'oponopono like they used to before. The tradition still exists. So there are certain places in Hawaii um, that actually do this as a ceremony. But the ceremonies that I experienced while I was growing up and what was passed down to me from my grandmother um, uh, the huna, so ka huna is basically, it's the knowledge, right? Um, kuhuna were the elders or the holders of ancient knowledge. And my grandmother imparted many things to me. I'm very sorry that she wasn't able to pass down to me the art of weaving lahala. I really wish I would have paid more attention to that and had more time with her. But she did teach me about ancient traditions. She did teach me ho'oponopono. She did teach me about the spirits that reside on the earth and all of the energies um, that the culture understands. And as I got older and started looking at other ancient cultures, um, other belief systems that exist now and that existed before, there are a lot of similarities that just culturally are accepted to be a specific way because this is how it was passed down to us. So with Ho'oponopono, um, being something that's no longer in an actual traditional training, um, I have to pass this down to as many people as I can. I do not believe that any culture's traditions only belong to that culture. There are, I would have to say, barely scratching 300,000 Hawaiians left on this planet. There are not that many of us. And it's silly that we think that we're just going to grow our culture and keep the awareness of alive by just keeping it to ourselves. So I am going to give this knowledge to you guys. Um, Ho'oponopono being the four and the Hawaiian code of forgiveness. And it's a super important thought because when we forgive other people, when we forgive others, uh, who are we forgiving really? You're actually entering the process of forgiving yourself. So if you are uh, at all um, aware of or have practiced or are licensed in neuro linguistic program linguistic programming God, so bad <laughs> there's a saying that people 
can only do the best with the resources that they have, right? The toolbox that they've been given. That's how people deal with the world. And if you've had, if you understand that thought at all, then you know that forgiveness has a lot to do with forgiving people which means you're a people too. So you have to include yourself in that. So Ho'oponopono is not just forgiving other people. It, you have to literally be able to forgive yourself for having these thoughts about those people. You have to forgive yourself about having thoughts about yourself that are limiting and that are negative and that prevent you from excelling in life and being successful and being able to have the ability to see uh, truly, the creator, the power, the mana, right? That's the Hawaiian word for pana, power, mana, that resides in each and every person and that all of us are exactly the same. So in order to truly forgive other people, we have to forgive ourselves. Um, and when we think about Ho'oponopono and the actual traditional way of doing it, you have to think about familiar patterns, so patterns, um, the Hawaiians didn't have an understanding of karma um, as Eastern philosophy brought into the world. And later on, I learned about it. Uh, but we did understand that there were family patterns, uh, things that were held together by bloods and bonds that were passed down from generation to generation, things that didn't belong to them, belief systems that didn't belong to them, ways of thinking about certain families or certain people that didn't really belong to them. And when you look at just how your family is, right? Like my family, I say, like, um, well, we don't do that in our family or that's, you know, that's just how, how our, that's how, that's just how I am. That's just how we are. That's just how my family is. It's that programming that you've been given that really doesn't belong to you. And um, Ho'oponopono doesn't just help you forgive other people and yourself. It helps to break, right? It helps to break those familiar familial ties of family karma and belief systems that don't really belong to you, that don't serve you in any positive way and that you no longer need anymore, right? So respecting all energies, Ho'oponopono brings balance. So the process of Ho'oponopono is basically you bring into your mind anybody or anyone that you don't feel uh, in alignment with, uh, whether you're upset with them or you feel betrayed or you feel angry, um, or you feel sadness, or you feel lost. Something about some kind of um, misalignment or not being able to support them, not being able to look at them in a positive way, uh, right? And in your head, as, this is, as you're saying this to yourself, hopefully in the mirror, right? Because Ho'oponopono is very effective when there's two people. Uh, I'll explain that later. But uh, in your head, uh, I want you to create like a platform, like a small stage be underneath you, right, before you. And I want you to imagine this infinite source of love and healing that flows from the universe and all energies that exist around us at all times, flowing in from the top of your head, right? into your crown chakra, flowing into your higher self. Um, and then I want you to imagine that this feeling and light and love and healing fills up your body, like from your toes all the way up to your crown to the point where it is overflowing over your body. Um, and make sure while you're doing this, when you do this, this is actually not just healing yourself, but uh, healing other people. So this is an imagining of me when I'm doing Ho'opono with Ponopono with someone else. And then this healing and love and light that overflows and outpours out to back out of my crown chakra, right? This is the time that I am imparting that love, that healing, um, that acceptance and forgiveness for this person. Um, that I have in my mind's eye, this platform in front of me, and also myself at the same time. So um, the next thing is to 
when you are overflowing with this and when you imagine this person in front of you on your platform uh, also being filled with this love, this light, this healing, right? This forgiveness. And it also overflows through their body, right? Covers like a, like milk coming out of a cup, right? You're going to imagine that this person now full of love and light and healing is just going to rise up and, and elevate and just continue on it, its own path. They're just going to go away. And as you see them move away from you, whatever tie that kept you in this mindset about this person, you in your mind's eye, you're going to visualize you cutting that cord between you. Whatever negativity there is, there is no more. And you can do this with every single person in your life who you are not aligned with or that you're not happy with. And you can do this with an image of yourself or energies, you know, embodied energies that you have that you are no longer, that no longer serve you. Um, and, you know, thinking about that process, it's an acceptance of who you are, forgiving yourself. Of course, feel those negative emotions if you have to. This is part of the process of forgiveness, is allowing yourself to feel everything. Our world has become so crazy and so, I don't know, it's like everybody's so bottled up where it's just not okay to be sad and not okay to be angry and not okay to actually have negative emotions. That is not true. All of us have emotions, we're human. It's when we allow those negative emotions to railroad us or to stop our progress or to keep us from having the abundance and the love and the, and, and the things that we want in life, right? Then at that time, they no longer serve us. I'm not saying that negative emotions are bad. They're not bad, they're needed. You have to have those negative emotions to grow and you have to have those negative emotions to force change, but they shouldn't keep you from change. And this is the part, that's the time when you know it's time to let it go. So a little bit on, I guess, it's history. Yeah. So a little bit on the history of what actually goes on. Um, it's kind of what we talk about, like a rite of initiation. Um, the rite of initiation with uh, Hawaiians that was just traditionally passed down by kahunas, which are the hol holders of um, elder knowledge, ancient knowledge, um, is basically almost the same thing as attunement for Reiki. We attune ourselves to the energies, the spirit guides, um, to our ancestors, and open ourselves up to receive higher guidance and our ability to help others to heal. Um, we learn so, so, so many things um, about who we are while we're going through the process of attunement and in the traditional way of basically what you have to go through. Um, there's a story. I really don't want to keep everybody that long, but I want to tell you the story of how Ho'oponopono kind of is passed down and why the kupuna so the kahunas, like myself, right, spiritual um, leaders, facilitators of this kind of healing, um, they were initiated into this, and they were carefully selected, um, not because of their family lines, but because of who they were. So the ho'omaka, or the initiate, is laid on a bed of lava rock that is about four feet high, uh, six feet long, three feet wide, and... There are kukui nut oil lamps because we have kukui nuts. Those nuts are super high in oils. That's what we used to use for fire, uh, for lights and candles. And every corner would have a lamp. And the initiate would lay down and a chant would be said over the initiate. And they would be massaged in a way called lomi lomi, which is also passed down. It's a traditional way of Hawaiian massage. And... Uh, they would work the muscles, the body, and the energies with this person, awaken the energies within this person. And this would happen daily for several days. Um, I would say three at the most. And then they would go through the process of cleansing and then attuning and then charging this person with old ancient knowledge and energies and 
helping guide them to be able to receive messages from ancestors. Um, our ancestors, the Hawaiian word for our guardians, are called aumakua, amakuas. And a lot of times they are, they take animal form or sometimes actual God form. And there are prayers that are said. And so in the beginning of Ho'oponopono, you call in all your ancestors and guardians to watch you while you go over this process. And you pray. E pule kako, e ku, e lono, e kane, e kanaloa, e hoi, e ho ana i luna, e pi ana o lalo, e hui ana na moku, e ku ana kapaya, o ala me mako, e ola me mako, ho me makana, ka ike ke ola no, amana. At this time they call, they say, please, here is a prayer of thanks to the energies of creation, destruction, peace, the plants of the life, the, the, the energies of the water, everything there is, come. Come into this place and rise. Come into this place while the energies fall. Come into this place in this circle with us. Be with us, be with us. Give us your power, your mana, your energy, and your protections. Amen. So that's how they begin Ho'oponopono. Um, and then there's lots of meditation and it's just a whole entire process. After you create a safe space and you ask the guardians, the energies, the spirits, the ascended masters to watch this process that you're about to go through, then you will do your chanting. Um, and for Hawaiians, for Polynesians, chanting has a very deep deep sense and meaning, just as the mantras do. Very deep and ancient, uh, ancient, powerful, powerful things. And so words are just powerful. So when we say our ho'oponopono, when we say, you know, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I always get crap. It's hung up on the second part, third part. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Um, I love, uh, thank you. I love you. And it's, I don't know, pretty powerful. And, and people always look at me when I talk about it and they're like, it's not that bad. Try saying it to yourself in the mirror if you don't have someone to help you facilitate it and see if you can't cry and like not cry. It's like impossible because it's an exchange of energies and a releasing of what you don't have. And in order for it to like really happen for you, you're gonna, you're going to release those things and to be able to be in those emotions, work your way through forgiveness and bringing yourself into happiness elevating yourself to joy and then finally getting into peace that's the happy spot people that is the spot is to be in peace and you have to work through your other emotions and the lower vibrations and get to you know elevate yourself um, into those uh, upper higher vibrations and then finally to peace um, where you can finally come to terms with what's going on and then Cut that old belief, that old way of seeing someone else, that old way of feeling, um, those kinds of energies that didn't serve you and didn't serve the other person. And it's amazing that when you do this, what happens to those people, right? So you being a creator, if you understand anything about that, um, you will not be surprised that you can see healing and change happen to someone outside of you because of what you did to yourself inside. So um, I guess that's what I'm just going to post the actual Ho'oponopono chant here just to remind everybody what it is. And I hope this helped you a little bit. Thank you so much for looking at it. Um, I so am grateful and glad and have appreciation and I'm so excited that you're about to um, do that for yourself and for someone else. Much light and aloha. Namaste.